Perfect Pairings kicks off with the designers, dressed in their best, arriving at New York City's Daniel Restaurant for a fine dining experience. The dinner tables are set for two, so the all-stars pair up and Anthony and Kimberly end up sitting together. Yes, we on a date. The new lesbian couple, Anthony jokes. Host Alyssa walks in looking fashion as hell, might I add, guarded by Daniel's executive chef Jean-Francois Brule and head sommelier Raj Vadia. She tells the designers that they're about to be treated to a fine dining experience like no other, and obviously everyone's so excited that, they forget, they're participating in Project Runway and there's no such thing as pure enjoyment. Anyway, the designers are going to enjoy dishes expertly paired with a wine compliment obviously, the inspiration for the episode title. Alyssa then reveals that whoever the designers chose as their dinner companion is also their perfect pairing for this week's pairs challenge. Cue some eye rolls, smiles, and one or two scared faces. The designers are paired up as follows, Marlene and Candace, white asparagus and 2011 Gruner Veltliner Anthony and Kimberly, lamb chop and Sarah Melissa and Ari, citrus cured Hamachi and Chablis Ken and Fabio, Guinea Hen Duo and Pinot Noir Char and Stanley, lobster and rosé of Pinot Noir Joshua and Amanda, black sea bass and 2013 Chardonnay Helen and Edmund, minted pea soup and Chenin Blanc the challenge, to create elegant looks that complement each other, inspired by the dish or the wine in the pairing they were served. They have one day to complete their designs. The winning pair gets to return to Daniel for a full five-star dining experience. Alyssa then drops a grenade, the losing pair will get eliminated. Bam! First double elimination of the season. The designers are scared, and Fabio simply says, Really really Alyssa Alyssa is enjoying the moment. Feeding off the nerves and anxiety the designers are exuding, she exits the room with a beautiful and shady good luck you guys, and bon appetite. Personally, it's my favorite Alyssa moment thus far. The designers get to eating. As they are all treated to exquisite and beautifully plated dishes, Jean-Francois Brule and Raj Vadia explain to the designers why the wine is paired with the dish. Time to sketch. Melissa is inspired by her bite and colorful hamachi and decides to create a top dress fusion with elegant pants. Her perfect pairing, Ari, decides to make a cocktail dress based on her wine, which makes her feel happy, and I feel like it's a bright day. Same Ari, same. Time to head to mood for some shopping. The designers have 30 minutes and a total budget of $400 per pair. Fabio was inspired by the clean lines of his dish guinea hen duo and lands on a floor length of gown with a plunging neckline and these over-exaggerated hips. Ken goes with an elegant cocktail dress over tailored pants, totally inspired by his Pinot Noir's restrained lightness. Anthony and Kimberly are struggling to find each other inside mood, but when they finally meet up, they decide to create complimentary looks out of a stunning blue fabric inspired by their bold lamb chop dish and Syrah pairing. Once inside the workroom, some pairings seem to be enjoying the challenge more than others. Anthony and Kimberly are in sync, but Marlene and Candace are on different ends of the spectrum when it comes to design aesthetic and are failing to communicate with each other. This pair is struggling, and I am so worried for Candace, but she feels confident, sort. Of, I can pick up the direction that I know Merlin's going to go in, says Candace during her confessional. Actually you know what that's bowls. I'm not quite sure where this is going. Finally, it's time for mentor and Marie Claire editor-in-chief Anne Fulin Wider to give some feedback and yet another fashion history lesson, this time focusing on collaborations, because they're Anne talks about some iconic collaborators in the industry, like Dolce Gabbana, Mary-Kate and Ashley of the Row, and, of course, Valentino's creative directors, Maria Grazia Chiri and Pierpaolo Piccioli. No pressure at all for the designers. Moving on to her feedback, Anne is interested in how Aris Pearl beads are going to work out. Honestly, I think NWASNT into the beads neither was designer Fabio. She tells Char and Stanley that their fabric color choice a pinkish rosé tone is very literal, given that they had lobster paired with rosé, but nonetheless she loves the fabric and thinks it's a nice pairing. She tells Joshua and Amanda, who describe their black fabric choice as safe, that the F word is not something we like to hear in Project Runway All-Stars. I literally gasped when she called them out. As for Merline and Candace, who are clearly not on the same team, Anne reminds them that having the same colors doesn't necessarily translate to a good pairing, and that they could both go home if one look is weak. The models come in for their fitting, and Ken and Fabio are on track for a successful runway. I'm rooting for these two designers, and I demand a real-life collaboration ASAP. Anthony is not feeling Helen and Edmund's designs and describes them in a hilarious, and, might I add precise, fashion, saying, it look like a tampon and blood, like right before they come together. That's what they look like individually. I love Anthony so much. 
Regardless, Helen and Edmund are proud of their looks, and that's all that matters to me. Ari and Melissa are struggling because Melissa's pants don't fit her model, so she decides to scrap her entire look and make something new. At this point I have so much anxiety, and I'm starting to worry about this pairing, even more so than I am about Marlene and Candace. It's like they forgot about the pairing challenge. The next day Ken runs through a long list of to-dos, but he is confident about his and Fabio's designs. Anthony runs into a little issue with his fabulous dress and has to sew his model into the design because he's out of time. Ari and Melissa, oh my god, they are spiraling and that's that. After the models head to the Umberto Beverly Hills Salon and the Rodeo Glam Ramias, it's time to hit the runway. But wait, before that, everyone borrows accessories from the Intermix accessory wall. The edit shows the designers throwing shade and praising each other's designs, but it's mostly shade. Recap continues on page 2.